The year was 1977, and if you're older like me, you know what that's like going back. That's a number of years. Some of you weren't even born in 1977. But back in 1977, my mom and my dad took me to the movies to see a movie that I was dying to see. I had heard the, the, the commercials about it. Everyone was talking about this movie, and they took me into the theater. I was 10 years old at the time, and I walked into the theater, and as soon as the words started scrolling a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I was taken to a whole nother world. And my life in that moment, in that, changed my childhood completely. All of a sudden, I was into everything out of outer space. I was into everything Star Wars. Then they came out with toys. I had to get toys. I actually clipped out pictures of Star Wars in the newspaper and scrapbooked everything. We were obsessed as kids with everything Star Wars back then. We actually, are, me and my friends were so enthralled with Star Wars, we went back to see it seven times at the movie theaters. Back then, there were no v- VCRs, DVDs, online streaming. There was no internet. If you wanted to see the movie again, you needed to go back to the theater to see it. So we went back seven times to watch the, this movie, and it transformed our life. And actually, we were like, we can't get enough of this movie. And we said, you know, we, we need to, we want to take it home with us. And back then, camcorders, nobody owned them, but they were huge, you know, and so we can't really take a video camera into the theater, but we as kids, we were a little rebellious, so we said, you know what? They have something in the 70s called tape recorders, and they were huge like this now. You know, it pops up, Ooh, put the tape in there. So we were like, we can sneak this into the theater, and we can record the movie so we can listen to it over and over and over. And we thought, how are we going to get this big thing, tape recorder, into the theater? And my, my good friend Rick, his mom sometimes would take us to the movies, and we said, hey, Ms. Baumhauer, would you take us to the movies? And can you bring that big handbag you always bring? And, and, and can you put this tape recorder in there for us? And she, she was like this, you know, Mrs. Cleaver, kind of like perfect mom. She's like, sure, I'll do that for you, boy. She's a little rebellious, too. Took it in there. We pulled it out in the theater, and we record the, recorded the entire movie so that we could listen to it over and over. And what's amazing about Rick's mom is that she knew we were boys, and we get hungry at the theater, and she was kind of, she didn't want to buy snacks. And so in her beautiful, magical bag, she had snacks. And so halfway through the movie, she said, Hey, boys, do you want a sandwich? Would you like a sandwich? Sure, we'll take a sandwich. So in the middle of the theater where there's this aroma of popcorn, she pulls out tuna fish sandwiches. <laughs> and we were boys, we didn't care. I always wonder, what did the people around us in the theater, they're smelling popcorn, and all of a sudden you're smelling tuna fish. What is tuna fish doing in the theater? Um, but we ate the sandwiches, we loved it, and we Listen to that recording till that tape wore out. Because, and, and actually, when I watched the original Star Wars, I have so many of the lines in the movie completely memorized because I've listened to it over and over and over and over again. And you wonder why, why does Star Wars have such a connection to people? What is it about Star Wars that it, it didn't just end up being one movie, but there was tons of movies that went on. A whole franchise was built out of this one movie. What is it about Star Wars that captures the heart of my generation growing up, captures the heart of generations now as they watch them? What is it about Star Wars? And if I was to look at it, it would be this. This would be the thought when it comes to Star Wars here, that every single one of us longs to be part of a bigger adventure. We long to be part of something that is bigger than us. We long to be in a story and an adventure in life that is bigger than what we see with our eyes. And when we watch the Star Wars movies, that's what it is. We are part of a story that is bigger, and we're, we're in a brand new world. And all of us, when we watch this, kids, I want to be part of that kind of world. I want to be part of something bigger. I want to be part of an adventure. We all have that longing in our heart, don't we? To be part of an adventure, to be part of something bigger. And, and the truth of the matter is sometimes we live vicariously through movies. And we think the adventure of our life 
is just watching a movie and then we go back to our mundane existence, right? The truth is God has something bigger, you know, in store for every single one of us. That even though these days, sometimes when they, people look at Star Wars, they almost make it into a religious experience. I'm going to Disney World. I'm going to experience all of that. And they're, they're loyal to all of the movies. And the interesting thing is George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, this is what he said about the, the, what he created in the movies. He said this, I would hate to find ourselves in a completely secular world where entertainment was passing for some kind of religious experience. He knew, even in writing these stories where he would take people into these experiences, that there was something happening in this world, that there's a bigger story, that, that there, there's a God of this world, that, that when we follow Jesus, that there's a story that's bigger than what we watch on, on TV. And the truth of the matter is these stories that we watch in movies, they should drive us to the bigger story. Because the truth of the matter is that God is writing an epic story in this world, and every single one of you have a role to play in that story. Every single one of you have a role to play. And there's an adventure of following Jesus that is even bigger than what we would watch on the the big screen. And the interesting thing is when you look at the story here in Scripture, when you look at the story of the disciples, I mean, the disciples of Jesus, I mean, here's the cheesy part for the sermon. When you take Jesus and disciples, if you take the first two letters of Jesus and you take the first two letters of disciples, what does that spell out? Jedi. Okay, that's cheesy. But anyway, the Jesus disciples, in the book of Acts, it is the story of the way that they followed God on an adventure. And the amazing thing about the story is it's a lot like the Star Wars story because in the story of Star Wars, who are the rebels? Are the rebels the good guys or the bad guys? They're the good guys. The goal is to join the rebellion against the evil empire that's taken over the galaxies, right? That's the theme of Star Wars. The interesting thing is when you read the book of Acts, there's something called the Roman Empire who ha- that has come and has taken over large portions of earth at that time. Countries, they have gone in just like the evil empire in Star Wars and they've taken over and people would have to pay homage to the Roman Empire. And, and at that time as well, there were religious leaders not the dark Sith, but there's religious leaders that were against Christianity. They were against this new follower of Jesus. And both the Roman Empire and the religious leaders worked to stop the disciples from going forward. And if you read the entire book of Acts, the story is join the rebellion of these followers of Jesus that went against the flow of what was happening in the world and tried to help people move from the dark side into the light of Jesus Christ. And they faced all kinds of challenges and difficulties in the process. And the story that is written here is the story that God invites us into. And the power of the, and the hope of Jesus Christ in the gospel is what overcomes throughout the book of Acts, just like in the Star Wars movie. So why don't we take a look at this story because I want every single one of us to grab a hold of this story for our lives and realize you can live an adventure, that God has an adventure in store for your life. And so when we look at the very beginning of the disciples of Jesus, here's how they got started. Here's how they were called into this adventure. It says, one day Jesus was walking along along the shore of Galilee. He's just walking along and he sees two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew. And what are they doing? They're throwing a net into the water for they fished for a living. These were young men, like Luke Skywalker. They were young men in the story. And in those days, if you, the goal in life, if you were a young man, is to be a disciple of a rabbi. You wanted to be an apprentice of someone in the church, in the, in the, religious circle. That was the goal. But if you weren't smart enough or you didn't have the skills or the abilities, you were not invited to be part of one of the, 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 to follow a rabbi. And so then you went back to the average ordinary life of what you were doing. And these young men went back to just fishing because maybe their parents were fishermen. And so they went back to that story. And, and Jesus comes along and he invites them into a story that is bigger than them. He invites them into an adventure that is bigger than they are experiencing fishing. He invites them into an adventure that they've dreamt about going on, but never had the opportunity to. And Jesus comes along to them. 
And he says, I've got a purpose that is beyond this world. I've got an eternal purpose for you. And this is what it says. Jesus came up to them and he called out to them and said, come, follow me. Come and follow me. Come along. And I will show you how to fish for people. I'm going to show you how to, to, to extend my kingdom into this world, to extend the greater calling that I have for you. And what did they do? They left their nets at once and they followed Jesus. And they followed him on this adventure. Interestingly enough, when you watch the Star Wars movies, in the original Star Wars, it's almost a similar kind of story. Here's Luke. He's living just an average, ordinary life on a a planet. And what happens? He meets a guy named Obi-Wan Kenobi. Here's a little picture of those two guys. He meets Obi-Wan Kenobi, and, and, and what happens in that experience is he, the, 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 there's an adventure. He sees a princess, and the princess says this, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, what? You're my only hope. We all know that. You know that at home. You know the line, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. And in that moment, Luke goes, there's another story here out there. There's something that I could be part of. There's an adventure that I could go on. And he wants to go on that. And in that moment, he, he has a, a master who will eventually, he will be the apprentice for, you know, that he's going to follow, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi on this adventure to rest rescue this princess on the other side of the galaxy. And so he invites him into this story, and he dives into it. And the story of, of, of Luke is this. This is the story of Star Wars. This is why the story is so appealing. Luke Skywalker was pulled from an average insignificant life to one of risk, to one of adventure, to one of destiny. A rebellion was underway And the rebel inside of him was waiting to be unleashed. Luke's life was was transformed when he discovered his place in the story. This is why we love the Star Wars movies. Because there's good versus evil. There's a calling. There's something greater. And he moves out of average, insignificant life to a life of risk, adventure, and destiny. And let me ask you today. Do you desire to live a life of risk? A life of adventure? A life of mystery? A life of destiny. (laughs) That's what God is calling you into. That's what Peter saw when Jesus said, come and follow me. It wasn't just believe in me. It's like, I'm going to take you on a journey and it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be awesome. And, And this is the longing inside of every single one of our hearts. All of us, when we wake up in the morning, sometimes we go, there's got to be more to life than this. You ever ask that question? There's got to be more to life than this. I was thinking about it just this week. I was sitting on my back deck and I looked out and I saw some weeds in the backyard and I go, I better take care of those weeds. And I went to the garage, got some weed killer and I'm spraying their weeds in my backyard and I'm thinking, you know what? My life, there has got to be something more than just clearing out weeds in this world. There has got to be a calling that is greater than this. And the truth is every single one of us inside of us, if we're honest, we realize there's got to be something more than this. Just what I see with my eyes. That's where Peter was at. There's got to be more than just fishing. There's got to be more than just ordinary. There's got to be more than just average. And Peter discovered that day that following Jesus was where that more was found. Following Jesus was where that adventure was happening. And he left his nets and he began to follow. And and if you're asking in your heart, there's got to be more. Is there an adventure for me? The truth is Jesus is saying, there's an adventure for you. There's an adventure for every single one of you. Doesn't matter what your background is. Doesn't matter if you feel like you're average. Doesn't matter if if you feel like you're insignificant. He's got a calling for every single one of you. And sometimes we go, I don't know if God could call me. And I'm sure the disciples wondered that just like us. They were human. Can God really use me? I got, I'm not perfect. I have issues. I have challenges. Peter was that way. And this is what Jesus said to the disciples later when they began to doubt. And this is what we need to hear. If we want to live God's calling, if we want to live this adventure that he has in store for you, he says this, you did not choose me. You didn't choose me. 
I chose you. I showed up and chose you. And that's what we love in Star Wars because we feel like you've been chosen for something greater. I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. What does bear fruit mean? That means that you're going to do something that's going to last, that your life is going to have significance, that your life is going to have a contribution, that you're going to go on an adventure and you're going to do something that's going to have a lasting impact in this world. Is that not what we all want? Is that not what we all desire? And Jesus is saying right in the beginning, I've chosen you and I've appointed you so that that you might go and bear fruit. That's the calling that he has on your life. It's an adventure that he's inviting you into. And as you step into that adventure, this destiny that God has, that he wants to place his fingerprint on the world through your life. I mean, it's not the other side of the galaxy, but it's right here that he's got a calling for your life and my life. And the disciples stepped into that. But here's the question. If we want to live an adventure... If God has chosen us, here's the choice that we got to make. Will you choose a life of safety or will you embrace risk? Because the truth is, if you want to go on an adventure, adventures don't stay in the safety zone. They live in the risk zone. zone. Think for a moment, Luke Skywalker. Here he is with Obi-Wan Kenobi. He sees the princess. He's like, okay, I'm going to go rescue her. This is going to be great. I can't wait to do it. Hey, by the way, who has her? Who's got her captive? Oh, it's Darth Vader. He's just the most powerful person in the galaxy. See, he has all kinds of powers to control people, and he's amazing with a lightsaber. Oh, he's the one? Okay, I got to take on him maybe. And where is this princess? Where is she at? Well, she's on the Death Star, and the Death Star is a giant ship that is a, has a 75-mile radius, and there's more than a million, you know, enemy people on the Death Star. They are there, and you're going to have to battle against them. There's stormtroopers. The Empire has this as their fortress. And guess what also they have on that Death Star? They have a laser that can actually blow up planets. And Luke would be like, I think I'll just hang out here. I'll maybe find another princess that looks, that doesn't need so much risk to save, right? No, no, no. Why do we love Star Wars? Because every step of the movie, every moment that happens, they are, he's, look, they're taking a risk. He's stepping away from safety toward risk. Every scene in the movie is moving from safety to risk. That's why we love it. And if you and me want to dive into an adventure with Jesus, we got to say, you know what? Because when following Jesus, it's moving into the risk zone. It's moving into the uncertain zone. It's moving into maybe where we've never gone before. But it's going to be the adventure of a lifetime that he's inviting you into. So what happens to these disciples? Well, they follow Jesus for three years. He dies. He's resurrected. They see that. And now the book of Acts. What happens in the book of Acts? What is this rebellion that they're moving out into this evil empire of the Roman world? What does it look like? Here's the first story where they run into some risk, run into some challenge out there. And it's in Acts chapter 4. Here's what happens to them. The priests and temple guards, remember, they were against them too, trying to take them out, trying to shut them down as they're spreading the hope of Jesus. And they're going out to say, hey, this Jesus, he was God in the flesh. He redeemed the world. Salvation is found in no one else other than Jesus. This is the hope of the world. You can move from darkness to light. That's the hope of the world. They're sharing this good news with people. But the priests didn't like that, and the temple guards and the old religious leaders didn't like that. And they were greatly disturbed because the apostles, that's the Jesus disciples, were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead, that Jesus was risen from the dead, that we can have hope beyond the grave, that they seized Peter and John, They took them captive. They arrested them. Here's the risk. Because it was evening, where do they put them? They put them in jail until the next day. They have taken them prisoner for sharing the hope of Jesus. This is the risk. This is the adventure, though. Sometimes we want to run away from adventure, but there, there's a little bit of risk there. So they, but they dive into it. And what happens is they, they're trying to decide what should they do with these guys? How should they? should they? Should they take them out? Should they destroy them? And they're worried about them. And so they bring them before them. And how could these guys take such a risk? And here's the hope. Because this is what, if you want to live an adventure, you got to 
and, and face that risk. And the only way to do that is through following God. He wants to help you have the courage to do that. And here's where they found it. This is what is so cool. This is so hopeful for us. It says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they looked and they said, they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training. They're average people just like you and me. They're like Luke Skywalker. They don't have a whole bunch of gifts. They don't have a whole bunch of abilities. They're just average, ordinary people. And they went, these guys aren't the cream of the crop. These guys aren't the special trained people. These are just average people. And, 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 but how are they doing this? What's their secret? What's your secret? How do we have this boldness to face risks? Here's what it says. Next verse. It says this, that they had been with Jesus. They recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. If you want to step into the adventure that God has for you, Here's the secret right here is you got to spend time with Jesus. Because when we follow Jesus, we got to get close to Jesus. And when we begin to get close with Jesus, we see he takes us on an adventure with him. And this is what I know about my life and your life is that where we get off track in life, where we get away from the mission of God, where we get away from the adventure of God is when we're not spending time with Jesus. When we're spending time with Jesus, we're tapping into what he's calling us to do. We're tapping into his courage. We're tapping into his confidence to go out and taste those risks. We're tapping into the ability to where he's going to send us and the thing that he wants to, things that he wants to do with us. I know when I don't spend time with Jesus, my mission becomes about my opinion. My mission becomes about what I like. My mission becomes about me when I'm not spending time with Jesus. And so the key to stepping in those risky moments, the key to stepping into that adventure is spending time with Jesus. And that's what these disciples did. That's what God is calling us to do. So they, 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 they spent time with Jesus. And the truth is, that's what I love about this church. I love about Epic Church is because when I look around, we're average, ordinary people. But we're a community of people. You're a community of people that when you spend time with Jesus, <laughs> we can change the world just like the disciples did. And what happens next to these guys? What happens next? Here's what happens next to, to, to our guys here. They do this. They, they call the apostles back in and they commanded them never again to speak and teach in the name of Jesus. They called them in and said, no, no, you guys don't talk about this Jesus anymore. And then Peter and John replied, oh, you're right. You know, as Christians, we should just be meek and mild and not cause any trouble. And we're causing disturbances in town. You're right. Let's not do any of that. Let's not at all. No, no, no. What did they say? No, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? What do you guys think? We're going to obey Jesus, not you guys. These guys are a little bit rebellious. They're opening up the rebellion inside. This is the rebellious side of these guys. They're like, we're going to follow Jesus. We're going to follow him. We're going to do what he says. We're going to go where he says. We're going to say what he wants us to say. And we, get, we cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. We got to talk about this Jesus. This Jesus has changed our life. This Jesus has transformed our soul. And because he's transformed us, we're not, we're going to defy even the authority there because we want to tell everybody about this. We're going to move with the power of God. And when you spend time with Jesus, you begin to look at things, situations. This seems like an impossible situation to get out of. They could have had them. These were the same religious leaders that just had killed Jesus a few weeks, maybe a few months ago. They could have taken them out too, but they're confident, they're bold because they're with Christ. And when you're with Christ, impossible things that are in front of you don't seem impossible because God plus you equals a majority in this world. And so they step out and they, they, they do that in this world. And, and they step out and they continue to tell and they continue to live their life with that mission. And, and here's the truth. This is what we need to grab a hold of. If we really want to live an adventurous life, Erwin McManus in the book, Seizing Your Divine Moment, he says this, it's a powerful thing when you give yourself away to a higher purpose, when you give yourself to God's calling, when you begin to live that adventure. There is a healing nature in joining the greater good. 
Recent studies are showing that people who believe in God actually live healthier lives, that God has actually called us to live this rebellious life of following him, where the world is going one way, that we're going to follow a different way. And then he goes on in the book to say, to say this. He says, Next line, next, next slide. He goes on to say, the fact shouldn't surprise us. While it is important to take care of yourself, it is extremely dangerous to make yourself all that you care about. This is where we get off mission. When we think the mission and adventure is about us, when we get on that, you know what? It takes us off mission. It moves us back into the safety zone. But we need to follow Jesus. Simply translated, we get better. We live more adventurous life. When we give ourselves away, the disciples gave themselves away to a bigger calling that God had in store for them. So what happens to these disciples in the book of Acts? What happens? You can read the whole rest of the story. I'll give you a little synopsis, just a few more chapters. In chapter 5, they get arrested again, and they get flogged. They get whipped. They get beaten, and they celebrated that they were worthy of of experiencing something like Jesus did, worthy of counting the cost of following God. And then look what happens in verse chapter 6, two chapters down the road. God's message began to spread. And many more people in Jerusalem became followers. They became Jesus followers. They became following God. Even a lot, look at it. This is so huge. Even a large number of priests, the people that were persecuting them two chapters later began to follow Jesus. Isn't that amazing? It's just power. It's the power of God moving from darkness to light. This is the power of God. This is the adventure. They put their faith in the Lord. This is the adventure that God has called you and I to go on. This is the adventure he's called you to go on to bring light in the dark places, to bring hope where there's despair, to bring the gospel where salvation is needed to bring Jesus to people. That's the hope of the world. This is the greatest adventure you're ever going to go on in life. And so here's the question for you and I in this. The question for every single one of us as we move forward and we think about Star Wars, and this is the theme of Star Wars, will you accept God's call to join the rebellion? Will you accept God's call to rejoin the rebellion? This is what God is calling us to do. Um, he's called you and me to join his calling. And in, the, in Star Wars, it's about the rebellion. They were rebels going against the flow in, in the, the um, early church. And he's called you and I to go on that, to join him in following the rebellion to go against the flow in this world and bring hope into this world where most people are following themselves and you say following God and helping them be free. And that's really rebellion. I mean, (laughs) we think rebellion is putting yourself as the center. That's not rebellion. That's just selfishness. Even Alice Cooper, I mean, he's an old guy like me, knows Alice Cooper. This is what he said once. Alice Cooper, rock and roller. He says, drinking beer is easy. Trashing your hotel room is easy. But being a Christian, that's a tough call. That's real rebellion, following Jesus. That's what he's calling you and I on, to join the rebellion, to join Christ in following him. And some of you are sitting there thinking, well, you know, isn't following God just about being good? Isn't it? That's not what God, I mean, sometimes this is what the world thinks what being a Christian is. They think being a Christian is to be moral, to, 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 you know, and their world's opinion of Christians is that they're judgmental toward other people who don't follow Jesus. They have all the answers. They're self-righteous. They, they point out everybody's problems. That's not being a Christian. That's just being annoying. That's what that is. God's called us to be followers where Jesus said, come follow me. And he's like, come on. And they're following. And he's like, where are we going? What are we doing? How are we helping? And the truth of the matter, that's real rebellion in following. And the truth of the matter is for you and I, in the Star Wars movies, we think, can God really use me? Can my life really make an impact? Can I really be saved to do something greater? And in the newer Star Wars movie, the character that we love is Kylo Ren. And Kylo Ren is Han Solo and and Princess Leia's son. He's Ben Solo, but now he's Kylo Ren because he's turned to the dark side. He's walked away from God. He's walked away from the Force. He's doing his own thing. And we look at his story and we go, is his destiny sealed? Is it fate? 
in that moment that he's stuck there? Can he be changed? Can he be redeemed? Can, can he be saved? And we sometimes ask that in our own lives. You know, can we be saved? And what in, in his life, the person that helped him is, is Ray. And Ray is, is someone that was always there believing in him. She believed that, that there was still hope inside of him. She still hoped that he could come over, you know, to the, the, the good side. She hoped that he could still find, God, here's a picture of Ray that goes with, with Kylo there, that, she, she still, that he could still experience something different than he wasn't locked in. And in the end of the movie of the latest, The Rise of Skywalker, she re- finds hope in him. And he turns, and he, he turns good, and he begins to follow the force and the way. And I think every single one of us in this story, we sometimes ask ourselves that question, because I often feel like Kylo Ren, that I don't have all the answers, that I mess up more than I get it right, that I choose wrong sometimes. And I say things and do things. And does anyone still believe in me? Does anyone still have hope in me? Is anyone still there for me? And here's the truth about Jesus Christ. It says this. Uh, Paul says this in, in Scripture. He says, God who started in the, you on this spiritual adventure shares with us the life of his son and master Jesus. He will never give up on you. Never forget that. God called you on this spiritual adventure. And there's moments in your life, maybe today you feel like you've given up on yourself. Maybe today that you've given up hope that you could be changed. Maybe today you've given up hope that you could be redeemed. Maybe you've given up hope that God could still use you. But the truth of the matter is, your Savior has never given up on you. And he reaches out to you this morning. and He says, Come and follow me. Come and follow me on an adventure of a lifetime. Come and follow me and see the way I'm going to take you on a life of adventure, helping people find light in the middle of darkness, helping people find hope in despair, helping people find the gospel of Jesus Christ when they feel desperately alone. That is the greater calling that God has for you today. Let's pray. Jesus Christ, we come before you and we thank you for this morning that we can be here with you and to look into scripture and to look into the story of Peter and to know that in this story, God, that you, that he probably had lost hope in himself, God, that, that you could use him, but you called Peter and you said, I'm calling you and I'm appointing you to come and bear fruit. And you called him on the adventure of his lifetime. And he stepped away from safety into a life of risk. He stepped away from security into a life of adventure. He stepped away from that into what you have called him to do. And this world was never the same because Peter was called. And he was called for something greater than just a movie. It was called to change the world. And every single one of us are sitting here today because Peter accepted that call and stepped into the life of risk, and stepped away from comfort. And God, we don't know what you want to use every single person here, but we do know, God, that you're writing an epic story in this world, and that you have called every single person that is listening today, every single person that's tuning in this morning, God, that you have called them, and you have appointed them to go and bear fruit. And they may feel that they, you have given up on them, but you have not. They may have given up on themselves. They may have lost hope in themselves. But God, you have not lost hope in them. You've called them. And you want to use them. And it starts with just getting to know you more. And the invitation you make to us today is come and follow me. And then watch the adventure that I write through your life. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.